Welcome to the Underground Footy Podcast. My name is Mos Ray. I'm your host. I want to thank you for tuning in. And I ask that you please subscribe, like, follow on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever your platform is. Thank you and please enjoy. My first guest is Keith Fletcher. With with youth development. Um, so without further delay, I want to thank my guest today is uh Keith Fletcher, someone who I consider a good friend who's who's you know our families have have known each other for I would say many years, but at least as long as our boys have been uh <laughs> Our boys have been around from probably what do you think about age three or four? Yeah, about that. Yep. When we first met. Yep. Yep. Um, and the way that we met, I'm not gonna. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let you describe it because I know my version of it. <laughs> but and then we'll 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 talk about some of the young men that we've worked with and and a few young ladies. Yep. That have that have rolled with us. Um based out of uh we're out of the dmv or as people would say dc maryland and virginia um prince george's county hence the name pg young boys which you can find on all your platforms and um let let's go into the the start uh to start off keith's uh keith's son is named christian fletcher who now you instead of being keith fletcher your your christian's dad yeah, but we are. But we became that at a very young age, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when they were much younger, it's not yeah. just. And um, I want to congratulate you and the family on the journey so far, because obviously we hope to see the journeys continue as long as, as these young men want to play ball. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. and so uh, your son Christian signed with DC United. Uh, what age was that? He was, he just, he was a couple of weeks into 17. Into 17. Yeah. yeah. Um, did some good work and is now, has now, I want to congratulate you on the loan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank to you. Nottingham Forest. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we'll even talk about how that pathway got there towards the end, but let's, let's just talk about the beginning mm-hmm. and the stuff that will apply to parents as, as, as it is now. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to be fair. I have I have three sons that played also under Coach Keith, as they call him. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Ramsey, Romero, and RJ. Ramsey and Romero probably played more under you than mm-hmm. RJ did. Um, currently, Ramsey is in his freshman year at College of Charleston. I decided to do a little marketing here. So go ahead, describe describe how we we got this thing going. Um, that that's uh, uh, first of all. Th- thanks for the introduction, most and the opportunity to um, to speak to you and have have this conversation. Um, I don't know if, how how far off my recollection is from yours. Um, what I do remember is that um, my son is. I, I played soccer before. My son always wanted to play, so he was around the house at uh, two years old, kicking the ball. Two and a half, three years old, kicking the ball. Um, my brother was with me at the time and we spent, uh, you know, spent time with Christian, um, you know, playing the ball, hand-eye coordination, throwing, throwing balls to him, um, tennis balls to him and, and stuff like that. And then about, I guess he had no choice because that was the sport that the family knew. So he kind of, at about three years old, he started to get interested in wanting to play. Um, and I don't recall how how our connection came. I do remember us having um somehow getting quick feet information, quick feet soccer information. Right. Justin, Justin, uh, was Justin, Justin Reed. Justin, Justin Reed, Reed was was involved with that at the time. Um and and Justin was was gracious enough. Um he acknowledged that Christian was young. He was like about three years old. Justin had known me from playing. I played in the area. So he had kind of known me. He was a he's a little younger than I am. Um but he was gracious enough to allow my son to to start to play at that young age, um, and then you know that 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 kind of started the journey. Um, and then shortly thereafter, um, just in- pause mm-hmm. one second. I want to for the people that don't understand, the organization was called Quick Feet Soccer for Kids, mm-hmm. and what what they used to do was 
put together programs that were about eight weeks where the kids could come in, you know, learn basic skills, play pickup, you know, things like that. Kind of like an introduction. Um, one of the things that I noticed was that a lot of parents, sometimes yourself, myself included, you know, if you felt like you, you spent your money, you brought your kid out, you wanted them to run around. They don't always do that. Sometimes, especially when they're very young, like ours were, mm -hmm. they might just want to sit on mommy and daddy's lap and kind of take it in and watch mm -hmm. what the other kids are doing. Um, my middle one kind of did that. He was off doing what he wanted to do. And then one day we looked out there and he was out there with you and 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 his and his younger brother and and just just playing. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, and I mean, you no, know, don't be sorry. That's that's a good point. I think I think it's um sometimes it starts the love of anything starts with the parents, right? We 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 kind of give them the opportunities. They don't know yet um what they would like. We have to expose them to different things. So it's it's um it's quite normal for a son or a daughter to get involved in whatever the parents were involved in. And then you have to have some grace to allow them to um, find themselves. I had develop the love for it. My daughter started to play and then decided she didn't want to play that much anymore. So she, you know, we have to have the grace to allow her to find herself as well. So, and, and, and that's part of the journey, right? Part of the journey is you give them the opportunities. Um, you, we ensure that the environment was safe. It wasn't a, a costly undertaking, so we, we weren't going out of um, putting ourselves in a position where we would have been um, pressuring the kids to play because of some some investment we had made that was training us. And, you know, so so there are, a lot of factors came into play there. Um, and so you kind of eased into it. You know, mm -hmm. um, I was at the age where I could run around. So I was I was. You, you, you must have just recently myself. finished that because uh yeah, it's, I recall it's, seeing you run around for quite a while with it's, your it's, it's, it's slowed down a lot in the last few months. Um okay. but 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 that your point to your point is like you know, you give them the environment, you make sure it's safe, you encourage them, you make sure that you're you're humble as well, um, because they need the space to grow and 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 decide what they what they want to do. I mean, we were fortunate enough that our boys wanted to do it. Um, and after that is making sure that we can create an environment that they continue to grow. Um, and that's what we were able to do as as yourself and myself got closer. Um, I know um Justin kind of moved out of the area. And 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 you 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 did a, a fantastic job assuming a mantle in a space that um though not totally foreign to you, because I know you played. Um, it was not still, like you play. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> football is football. You know, you, you enjoy it. the love that you have is the same regardless of where you're fortunate enough to play at. So, so um, you were able to set up a, a, a structure that then allowed our boys to continue to develop, um, and then attracted other people. Um, yeah, we got and and and, and slowly <laughs> by surely, you know, we 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 expanded that and and. Um, ended up in a place where the kids were, were, were doing quite well. Um, and, and then there was an, uh, we had to also understand where our, our skill sets lie. Like, you know, I was not a formal coach. I had no, I knew where you should move in the game, but I, we also recognized there was a time that we had to put them in a different, in a different setting um, for them to develop further. So. And, and, and what I'd like to say is that, um, I guess I'll give a little more detail, mm -hmm. but when you came out with Christian and I, and I won't forget because the, the littles, as we call them, were not officially playing because there was a club that had been started. So like my oldest, who's about four years older than ours was probably a, a U, U8 at that mm -hmm. time, a U7. Mm -hmm. So they would be playing. And of course, the littles were going to be there anyway. So we grabbed a couple of pug goals. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing you, um, I think, uh, Matai Akamboni, uh, Taye was out there. Um, obviously, my middle son was out there. And it was several others that were out there. And so what, what you did was you stepped, you, you first, you kind of stayed back. You were in your office clothes. You kind of mm -hmm. lean on the fence. You know, I could tell you were just observing. You were just observing. And then ultimately you would come out 
and you'd show the kids something for maybe 10 minutes. And then these dudes would play for like an hour and a half sometimes. Sometimes they'd be there after the other practice was over. Mm -hmm. We'd all be talking. And I can't, I can't underestimate the value of having an environment where the parents can kind of kick it to mm -hmm. and not be all tight about winning mm -hmm. and losing and all of that. So we weren't really keeping score. We just let them run, burn off that energy, be able to go to sleep. So now talk, you were talking about how you come to the end of what you can do and what we did next. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, but but to that but that to that point, it, it's um, kids have to. It, it's very difficult how um, how we're structured here. You know, you, we tell kids when they're supposed to do something, and they may not be in the mood to do that particular thing when the schedule permits. So when we were growing up, we would play when we wanted to play. So there was this: you you didn't feel like playing, you would stop and do something else. You would you know um, here it's. You, you have three to four is this, four to five is this. Um, and they may not want to do that at that time. What was important, what, was, what we were fortunate with is that we, we could mix up the structure. We could have them enjoying themselves, playing, playing, playing. It was long enough where it was no pressure. We didn't have to run. We were close to home. So we didn't, we didn't necessarily have to drive an hour and a half to get where we wanted to go. So there was no pressure to leave and beat traffic. Essentially, when you came there, it was, you were relaxed. You were among people you knew. You um. So as you said, parents were able to chat, um, you know, um, and then the, the boys, the boys would play. They would just do what I, what young, what young kids do, you know, they want to play and have fun. And then you would work within the structure of that. And part of, part of that is knowing, um, having an awareness of what kids can do at what period of time. You know? That to me was the hardest part. Um, because when I first started coaching, Boys and Girls, Bowie Boys and Girls Club was like, we need volunteers. And I wrote up this whole little series of how I was going to run my whole practice. I'm dealing with four or five year olds. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I went out there and it was like herding cats. Yeah. You know, I was like, wait a minute, guys, we're going to do our running first. And we, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I didn't know anything. You know, yeah. I learned from people such as yourself and, yeah. and the coaches that the kids had later that were professionals in the field, right? Yeah. But, um, you know, there was a point where one day you came to me and you, and you told me about, uh, well, I would say Bethesda Soccer Club, right? Mm -hmm. And you talked about some of the techniques and things they use to develop players. And, um, you know, we use some of those and, and, and I, you know, I give the flowers to Philip Jow because, and, and Wendell, because I know that they were guys that were part of your community mm -hmm. and soon my community, but also they were working in a, I guess, a professional mm -hmm. soccer development situation. So tell me about that transition and, and how you made those decisions. It, um, it happened quite by chance, actually. I um, we were we had an indoor training session. Um, and for you I, or for kids? Ah, huh? no, for, for the kids. For the kids. Okay. All, for the kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I was I was running late. Tai was there, and um, Tai was doing the drills. So when I walked in the gym, um, in the corner where we, they were doing the drills, I looked. Now, down now where was this? Was this? What organization was this with? This was we. This was with us. In okay, here, with PG. us. Okay, this yeah, yeah. Okay, young I boys, know. right? Mm -hmm. This PG young boys. This is post going. This is us. Yes. Um, and um, I came in late, and when I came in, I saw um, Ty doing some drills with the kids, and um, but a parent was coming out at the same time and stopped me, and we were chatting. And my first response was to was to was to tell Ty that drill that you're doing is too difficult for the kids of that age. But because the parent approached me to talk, I couldn't shout down to, to say what I my, my being was telling me to say, right? Um, so I'm talking to the parent and Ty is doing this drill that I remember doing when I played on on the with the Trinidad on the 40 national team. Now these are seven, maybe seven, eight years old. I would think that was the age around Christian seven around there. Um, 
so Ramsey and everybody, Romero, all of us, you know, Ryan, you had a whole group around that age, right? Um, and I saw some of the kids were able to do the drill, right? Um, you know, some were not, some, some were not as competent, but th there was this, there was this core of about seven kids that could, could do the drill. And Ty kept doing this drill at, and he would, he would elevate the drill a little bit because I think at that time he was coaching PG Community College, right? Um, so he was a, you still on mute. So he was accustomed dealing with some older, you know, some older kids, right? Um, my takeaway from that is once I came home, I told my wife, I said, um, I have to stop coaching Christian. I say, because I am holding him back. Um, he was one of the kids that was able to do the drill that I thought was too old for them. And then I, what I recognize is that I, um, I didn't know what was age specific. I was in fact, um, retarding their growth by not giving them advanced things to do yes, so that then that then said all right we i need to start to find the next the next place for them to go but what was important is that they went into a place that i knew the people i believed in the coaches because i know there are, <laughs> there are quite a few soccer coaches that um they, I, I don't know keep, keep to be goes. fair you're a hard man <laughs> um, you played at a good level and you've always been willing to call it if you see it. And I, I won't use any more words with that, but you so, call it if you see it. So one of the things, so I come from my, my, my grandfather had a school, my, my father's, they've been in, in, in Grenada. We still have the school. Um, so I've come from a line on one side of the family of, of like teachers and educators and very hard line in that in that field you know engineers and doctors all of that like that type of field and one of the things my a brilliant uncle of mine said is the best teacher can only impart 75 percent of the knowledge so if a teacher comes and they only know 50 percent imagine how much they're teaching the kid and the poor kid is believing they're knowing 100 percent of what's going on so i've always taken that approach i've always taken the approach that if you want to teach um you especially where you have a choice so as, as parents you were given the gift of a child and you have to figure out how to raise this child. But if someone has given their child to you for you to teach them something, um, you owe it to that individual to be the very best that you can be um, so that you hopefully can impart 75 to 80 percent of what you know. And then they'll pick up they'll pick up other pieces along the way. So that's where my harshness comes from. It comes from that conversation I had with my my uncle and that realization. So. I am very aware of where I put my kids or any um, anyone that I am put in any sort of, of, of um, not authority, but a responsibility for. So it was important for me to find that type of environment um, where I could get the best coaching within an environment that will protect them, look out for them, that we can, um, that I can tell the parents that I would put my child there, not, 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 not selling anything to them. Um, and Not so that's no. where, that's where <laughs> I identify, I knew Jaume uh, for 20 years and he has, uh, he's one of the best, if not the best, uh, at, at, at coaching, training kids in the area. His kids, both his kids have been very successful. Um, and he's a lovely human being. Um, I knew Wendell Regis was at the club. I knew where they were. So I knew that if we got the boys there, they would learn from the best. Cause one of the conditions of going there was that, you know, Philip had to have an eye on them. <laughs> you know, he had to be involved in that. Right. And so, and so part of that was, was that, so I knew that one, we had to move them on and two, they had to go into a space of where they were, um, could be taught by the best. Right. Now, what are your thoughts on, like when, when people have to make that decision, whether it be to go from the grassroots, kind of like what we were doing now there, there was a period of time where we did both. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I will tell you that, in, in my opinion, part of it was keeping them kind of grounded in their neighborhood. I mean, you use culture, it sometimes sends people in a different direction because we had kids from all different technically cultures, but they were from the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm. They were familiar with each other. They could be friends regardless of what level each of them was at. Now, what are your thoughts on, like, so, so I remember at one point we were playing in like 
the Anne Arundel Youth Soccer Association on Sundays. And then we would play with our formal club on Saturdays. Now, this is when they're very young. So as I don't advise you to do that when a kid's, you know, mm -hmm. 12, 13 years old because they need their rest. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, maybe that wasn't the right thing to do at the time, but the kids really seemed to enjoy it. You know, and if they couldn't make it to their grassroots match, it was fine. We just played with who, because some of the kids did not belong to another club. That was yeah. it for them. So I felt it important to keep that going for them. Yeah, I mean, they love most. Most of the kids over there love love to play. Like so, mm -hmm. so you you have to you have to. And the only way you get good at anything is repeated actions, right? Right. Um, and you and you have to be again. It, it was we were lucky that we we didn't have far to go so we we were we kept it we kept in an area that, that the parents were in a five mile radius of where most of our things were happening living wise right well, now now do you remember it, it 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 came a time where we were like we have to find some organized competition and we started playing in the sam league which is yeah about 50 50 yeah. to an hour away yeah. depending on the time of day but we only played our matches there. Yeah. And we trained them at home. You yeah. were a big part of that. And, and so we would train them. They would go play at Sam. Mm -hmm. And they had to play. They played a year up. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and let's talk about um, taking a thumping. Like, because we had some times where our guys took a thumping. Like, you know, uh, against teams. It was rare. I would say that. Mm -hmm. But what are your thoughts on when the competition is mostly bigger, faster, stronger than you and putting your, your kids in that environment? So that's something you have to learn very young. And one of the parts, and, and, and it's an important thing for parents to remember right through, because um, that's something college coaches look for. Um, coaches look for, for, for people who can um, recover, um, who can take those setbacks and move on. And one thing as a, as a, any athlete, you know, people play basketball, you know, they say you, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you never take. So athletes have to have a, a, a short memory and, and the, the higher up you go <laughs> is the sh almost shorter your memory has to be. Um, you, you don't get too high when you're winning. You don't get too low. Um, you understand that it's um, the, Sometimes you'll do the best that you can do and you, you won't win. I, I don't believe in the saying that somebody wants it more than you. Everybody wants it. Like, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it's just the ball bounces a certain way. It so doesn't I think go your way. When they were young, um, for, for, for them to get that feeling and see who can recover and who, can, who will be like, all right, um, you know, you don't want them flippant. Right. You want them to care enough to try. But when it's finished, it's over. You shake and you move on. You, you know, so it's important. Mm -hmm. It's important to win. It's important to win with grace. It's important to lose with grace. Um, now, you, <laughs> we went through a, a, a period, too, where we went to a lot of uh, 4v4 and 3v3 competitions. You, you, <laughs> you did a lot of coaching in that area. And, and, when this thing goes up, if people look on YouTube, I'm going to make sure that there's some photos of you with the little guys. And, and I, I'll be honest with you, we didn't win. We, we sometimes caught runner ups and we did win, but I would say we lost more than we won. And when I say lost, we might come in third or second. And, you know, uh, how did you feel about like, we had to talk to parents or, well, I more so talk to parents. You. you didn't talk to the parents. Yeah. My job was to talk yeah. to them. And, you know, sometimes they would say, well, why did, why did you play such and such? Let's talk about at the younger levels, you have to develop some sort of confidence yeah. and know that your coach has confidence. I think for all players, if, if the coach doesn't appear to have confidence in you, that will affect the way the player plays. Um, would you agree? Or I mean, absolutely. Me a... I, I, that that's 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 life in any relationship, right? I mean, a, mm -hmm. a coach player is a relationship, um, and it's the same in any relationship, right? There there must be um, there must be a level of trust. There must be a level of acceptance. Um, 
there must be a level of forgiveness, but I think it comes from effort, right? So, so one of the things that we, so we always played up and, and, and you can see, you can see teams that are developed to try to win, right? Um, and, yeah, and yeah. Technically, you can tell who is, who, 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 who are learning the techniques of the game. I mean, we had some kids where you could see they were growing and trying to figure out like their, their feet were almost bigger than their whole, than their well, half was half their body, right? Mm -hmm. But when they got the ball, they never gave, they would try to do stuff, right? And all you knew is one, they'll catch up. You look at the parents, you see their, you see their side, you see their build, you see how they move. You're like, they'll catch up. They will, they'll figure out their ways. You right. know, you, you recognize the ones who, um, who may, who may need to get, develop what type of game they need to develop because, if you've played the game for a while, you can say, all right, this person needs to work. They need to be fast. They need to move. They need to, you know, they, ha they have to have a certain type of, of bite to them. So I think one of the things is that, I mean, there were a couple of parents, thankfully you took that part of the job because I would have had no tolerance for that. Um, <laughs> because I, I was not there, I was not there for that, you know? Um, and, and you handled that part. I was, I was very interested in, in, making sure the kids knew what I was about, um, knew that I was true to them, you know, knew when I was disappointed in their effort, right? Um, yeah. And yeah. and then I wanted them to do the right thing, like what I thought was the right thing, you know? Um, and so I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed my time doing that. Yeah. One of the things I want to talk about is the fact that when parents – from a very, especially with younger players, they try to figure out how competitive are they? The competitiveness a lot of times can have to do with how important it is to the player at that time. Absolutely. And where someone's at, at one age, is no indication of where they may go. And conversely, yeah, the player might think that, you know, I enjoy this game, I don't love it. Yeah. And, and you as a parent or a coach, have to recognize and you know they may ultimately become skateboarders they might yeah. you know they they may decide that they want to you know do music yeah and it is difficult and i've seen parents go through it when when they recognize that maybe this isn't for their player but they feel like he's got the talent i don't I, if he just apply himself you know and and i mean and that's our job to kind of like with with school you you would say that's a that's a big thing it's like look you may not love school but there is an expectation and so for me it was always like if you decide you don't want to be on a team if you decide you don't want to play finish out your obligation right and then we're off to yeah. the next thing and, and, and I did have players that maybe the mom brought the kid in. Because a lot of times, my, my, like my mother is the one who got me into, into footy. Right. It wasn't my dad. But then the dad might be like, well, I want him to play American football. And so mm -hmm. they'd be like, okay, well, we're not going to play this fall because he's going to play football. And almost sometimes before the season was halfway through, they were back like, he got hit one time and right. decided that wasn't for him. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. you don't get mad because that person tried something else with no. their child. Yeah. The keyword being, it's your player. Yeah. That's what me and some of my buddies said, my player. You know, when you're talking yeah. in terms of footy. But as and as a parent, what do you feel like um, the, you know what? I'll get to that. Let's talk about your pathway a little more. So. You're at Bethesda. When did you when did you realize that that Chris had a real knack and talent for this? Was um, it the beginning, or did you kind of feel like I don't want to put his eggs in, you know, you know, because I know you're big on education. You, your parents were your your family's educators and have done a lot with education. And you know, sports is in the grand scheme of your life is a pretty leading part yeah so i mean the first the, it, it's where i set the, the so the target initially was just was was college the target for me was that's how i was able to go through school and come out without any debt um i know that was important debt has magnified 
markedly up for college as, as magnified markedly since I was there. Um, so that's the that was the primary target for me and and for all the boys that I I had any any dealing with. I was like, how do you how do you get through school um, and covered as I don't care if you play division one, two or three. They, they love the AIA, JUCO. You're blessed if you get to play the, at school. The love, the love that you have for the game. I mean, just look outside. People play it on the side of this anywhere there's a patch of grass. Like it, it so yeah. I didn't that part is more apparent needing to 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 calm themselves <laughs> than than the individual child themselves. Um, and what you have to make sure is that you don't you don't impose that, or oh, you should have done X, Y, and Z. Like that, that's that's mm -hmm. That's not our call as parents. Like our call is, you know, right. um, is to present the opportunity, support them, and move on. So with me, with Christian, um, I mean, it is. I was told something very early. Um, Philip actually, Philip, when um, he saw my kid play, and he talked about like where he saw as, as the gap between where Christian was at that level, um, and um, where kids around his age were. And he said the gap never, never goes away. He says, you know, it just, it just how much work he wants, how much work he wants to put in. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I actually realized that, I don't know, but we played at Glen Arden. <laughs> you at remember Glen that? Arden, at Glen Arden for a while. Um, you know, he was a, a, a young kid on, on like maybe people two years older than three years. You know, he was getting MVP day. You know, he put, he plays, mm -hmm. he, so, so I don't know what that looks like, but I also recognize that it's not, it's not, it's not the norm, you know, you know. Um, so, so you know, Christian was a, a had a big body at sixteen, you know. So it's not the norm. So that doesn't that doesn't really define, um, right now, what, what anybody else is past. Now, what are your thoughts? Now, some of this is going to be tough for you to even try to answer, but yeah. what are your thoughts on like? like the 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 da slash mls next slash ecnl and you know all of those things because one of the things that i will say is that i know that early on people were trying to you know get chris out of his club situation and get him all kinds of places and you decided that he's going to stay where he was because a lot of people correct me if i'm wrong don't realize Chris never played in an MLS academy. No, that's true. You know, that that right there will be shocking to people. But he, he his professional uh, opportunities opened up. And how did you how did you make decisions based on like first you were talking about college? Yeah. Now I mean, other things open up. How did you was it hard for you to kind of recalibrate or no 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 because i, I mean it, it, it's it's akin to this um would you if einstein was teaching at, at at a community center but um i was teaching at university of at yale and you had an opportunity to send your son somewhere to be taught by some professor the one of the two of us where would you send him I hope you'd send them to where Einstein was in the community center. Yeah. So I didn't, I never cared about what the, what the structure of the club. You didn't was care like. about what the front of the shirt said. I didn't, I didn't care about that. I, I right. knew when he was, where he was, that they would look out for him. He needed, he needed, he was a young person mm -hmm. trying to figure out, um, cause there were times we, when we moved up um, to play at Bethesda, when he was invited to play, Jao had bigger teams and he'd invite him to play up two, three years. And the parents wouldn't tell us where the games were. Oh, that happened. Yes. Yeah. It happened um, even with, 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 with Ramsey, he had some yeah. opportunities and, so, and, and they would get blocked. But, but I would, I would say this, that a lot of the, uh, a lot of the things that you'll have to deal with as a parent of a, of a player are going to be outside of the realm of just, you know. Well, people are, people want the best for their, their their child, but my thing is, I knew that, like Philip, I called Philip and he'd tell me where to go. You know, there were times Chris didn't want to come out the car. I remember one game he didn't want to come out the car because he didn't like how he, 
he came out, Jao talked to him. I think he scored five in the game and then we went home, you know? So they have they have um I so I think the 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 the, the building isn't as important as the people that are inside the building. Uh, and so for me, um, it was not a hard decision. It was also important that I didn't disrupt the entire family. I have a, a daughter. Right. I have a wife. We had a structure. We go to school. He could, he was training in the area. It was important because we couldn't always leave and go and pick him up. But I could put him in a, by the grace they had, Uber had started. So I could put him in an Uber and it was a five-minute drive. Sometimes he'd fall asleep on the five minute drive and the driver would call me and I have to say, well, wake him up. And, you know, so it, it going <laughs> somewhere else was not was was not going to work in the realm of the family. I wasn't mm -hmm. worried about him being discovered. The beauty of America is if you're good at anything, they will find you. So don't 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 be don't feel you have to do something marvelous. There are people whose jobs, whose livelihood depend on them finding talent. And by the way, I will be getting one of those people on that that actually, you know, I, I it's funny because I guess people knew that I kind of had a pipeline to a lot of these players in the area. And, and when I tell you that I used to get a lot of DMs and phone calls and even to this day, people asking me about players because they looked on our Instagram and they're like, well, you obviously know this player or whatever. But I would also say that sometimes people don't need every piece of information, mm. especially if they have nothing to do with the situation. Yeah. You know, and you've always been very good about, you know, controlling that. Now, let's talk about this side of it. What do you do when your player does finally, you know, break the surface and you hit a certain age? And there's people that believe they can speak on your player or, and, and as a parent, it's totally different than as a, uh, as, as someone who's just watching the game, you know, because you know, this is a real person and whether your player performs, whether your player is on the team or off the team, that's your kid. Yeah. And you're going to love them whether if they quit tomorrow, yeah. Nothing changes for you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That yeah. that's the way I feel. And so how did you how did you kind of find the, the ground between responding to any comment or anything when it was brought to your attention? Because I know for a long time you wouldn't even touch social media. Yeah, so it's it, it's it's been a evolutionary process. Um, you know, when he was playing as a younger as a younger person. I would sit away from everybody else. My wife and myself would just stay away because I didn't want to hear the uh, anything that I could misconstrue for anything else. Um, and people get heated into the games and they can say stuff. So I, I knew I needed to extricate myself from those types of situations. So that's what I did at a younger age. Um, when he was fortunate enough to, to because he was at, L at London still, but in high school he was, I mean, they tried to tell me he couldn't play high school soccer and all of that. And I, I was like, um, most kids may never play anything other than high school soccer. It, they still, some of my best friends were when I played high school soccer. So my kid was playing high school soccer. Like, and he's not going to, he's, he has a, there's a life to live. So, so for me, he was, so that environment was, I didn't have to worry about any, any type of negative, any type right. of negative you, you get, you, mm -hmm. you know, you get a different kind. Um, and then I moved when he when he when he started to play professionally, what you have to understand, what I had to come to grips is he's not mine. Um, and people can say what they want to say. What I decided to do was I would I would try not to be um easily recognized as his father. So I would maybe not wear his shirt. <laughs> I would go in, you know, I I mm -hmm. because I lived in England and I saw what that side could be with my, 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 my some of my friends um, with them recognizing who you are relative to a player. Um, and so, and so I think it's part that you have to learn. I, I didn't, I still don't follow too much social media. Um, you can't help some of the stuff. Sometimes you want to respond. Um, right. I but, mean, I've, I've, you know, because of a lot of our kids are playing, you know, in college or, in professional ranks, not a lot in professional ranks. Let me, be, let me be perfectly clear. That is not an easy leap. 
Okay. So yeah. out of that generation, I believe there's two that are professionals at this moment. Right. You know, I, I do have hopes that some of them will reach that level. I don't know yeah. which part of it, yeah. but you know, um, another thing is that a lot of people say, and I've, I've been tempted to answer them on social media. And I, well, if you're really good, you got to go to Europe. Yeah. Let, let's talk a little bit about what that's like going to Europe <laughs> so that for the for the people that think they can just pick their kid up and, and send them off to Europe and they're going to be discovered and sent to, you know, that's wherever. Right. That 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 day you um, I, I, I can't I can't speak enough against that. Um, they, they, it, it's like, I mean, what, what makes you think that you can just come to America and say, I, I play basketball and I'm going to join the Lakers. Like, <laughs> like I mean, <laughs> right. w- w- what makes you think you could just come and get a tryout with the Redskins? You know, oh, what, you can't say that they're the commanders. now. The commanders. My apologies. Yes. <laughs> what, what they don't, what they don't recognize is that that is the only sport, um, there is a there is a professional basketball league in in England and most of it is there might be a little one in Europe somewhere. Um, they have a little cricket. No, six, FIBA, FIBA would like a players. word with you, but yeah, I got you. Everybody <laughs> plays. No, relative to spot to soccer, those leagues are you. Every kid from this height to for you know they have four sports in America. There's one sport in Europe in England. If we're speaking about England in particular, there is one sport. Every kid is in is is in an academy. Like every kid joined right. that that word academy kind of got yeah. flipped. Every <laughs> they have they have pub teams. You know, like you have a, like a bar, a neighborhood bar pub, mm-hmm. like where you go and you drink beers. They have a team, and, and then they're they, out there scouting people to play. Then they have six divisions before you get. You know, the, 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 the amount of people, kids playing soccer, um, what, what, if you are not selected in the highest level and you're coming from the U.S. and there's a part of that that has a connotation as well. Just like if you hear, you're from Brazil, you expect to see something. You, you, defer, right, 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 right. you defer to them until they prove that they're not. When we're coming from here, we have to prove the opposite. They're looking at us like you can't play. So you actually have a higher bar, right? So so not to mention that your kids are going to be away from home at what age? At 16, are they prepared to leave? Do they know how to pay a bill to the lights? Like and 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 that's the other thing. What mm-hmm. sacrifices as a parent are you willing to make? I mean, my my youngest left home to play in with Columbus Crew at 13 years old. Yeah. And was gone five years. Yeah. You know, honing his craft and, and being away. And, you know, as a parent, sometimes, you know, a lot of people are going to look. I look at the camera and say this. A lot of people are going to look down their nose at, at maybe what decisions you make or they may feel a certain way. But you and your family are the ones that make those decisions. And when you ride with it, you ride with it and don't. You know, you can't you look back. Though, you, have, you have to make it though with a with a with a certain amount of understanding. You you never know everything, but but no. you also don't go into it. Um, going to Ohio, I, I, you can he can call, you can get him in. in right. And I can bring him home at any minute. Right. When right. when you when you land in another country, you you in a different time zone. Um, when they're sleeping, you are up. Vice versa. Um, there is a. It's cold. It, you are alone. You have to. You are not in an environment. You are competing against men for the food that they feed their families. They are not there to to be friends with you. They they are there to move you. Um, professional sports is the only sport that when you have a job, they're trying to replace you. The so, minute so, you show up. <laughs> so so, so it, it, when you think, I think I think I think you 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 set the bar at, at trying to get. Um, First of all, raising a, a solid young person with character and skills, um, and and those types of traits that you would be proud of, regardless of whether they play a sport or not. If they're fortunate enough to get into to get into college and play, um, wherever that level may be, you you go and you enjoy that ride. Um, 
-hmm. If you for if you have a decision to make before, you have to know what your how your kid how your young person is. Are they able to 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 move abroad? I don't know many people that could have done what Ramsey had to do at his age. Um, at at thirteen, that I don't think Christian could have done that at thirteen. Um, so they're different. They're different levels. I think he's and you, and you make those decisions based on your particular situation. Your particular and, situation. And also and your, your child. what and and what that player, child, I'm gonna call him a child, is what they want to do. But you have to make it clear to them that is this a sacrifice that you're willing to make? Yeah. And at that and it could change. I mean, they're yeah. kids. So they could be willing to make it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I mean, it's just like, you know, you ask for something. For yeah. Christmas, and then when you get it, it's not quite what you thought it was, yeah. and you're like, mm. and you're like, why aren't you playing with it? <laughs> it's not fun, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and what they're going to, right? Like, so some of these, some of these, these clubs are you go to these clubs are well, like a, a Borussia Dortmund, for example. I mean, you go there and they know how to take care of young people, you know, they have structures, they have. Mm -hmm. You know, they have they have everything to take care of it. So there's a there's also I think you go as a parent, you see what the club has to offer. Um, but don't 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 think you're sending them to a school and then they will miraculously become. Uh, uh, <laughs> right. And 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 what um, because I'm trying to keep this in the confines of like somebody could listen to on work. So we may mm -hmm. come back another time. I'm, I got I got a bunch of guests I'm going to be bringing on to this. Mm -hmm. But what I would say is this is that. For a lot of people, they just have to know that this game can take you crazy places. I mean, my kids have been places I haven't been. Yeah, as a yeah, result absolutely. of playing this game. Yep. From from Mexico City, you know, surrounded by armed guards and two fences to play in a Scotia tournament. You know what I'm saying? People don't right. know, you know, what this game meets means to the world, perhaps, but it's it's a serious thing. And mm -hmm. um if you're lucky enough to get to play, you know, um, it is it is a great thing um, as far as, oh, one last piece I'd like to put on and, and I'd like you to kind of feed into this. Taking care of your player medically, meaning, you know, a player can be a commodity or an asset depending on where they're at and who they're playing for. Um. For myself, when, when my son went to school, I wanted to know about the medical staff. How important is it going to be? But I also know, especially in a professional environment, in every sport, sometimes you got to just take the reins and say, look, he can't play or I need to see my doctor or something like that. Can you touch a little bit on, you know, the, the, the side about staying healthy? Because people don't talk about it, but there's a lot of very good players that just they couldn't stay healthy. Yeah, there's a there's definitely a part. There's so they I, I think there are components to that part as well. You know, they, there's the obligation that the player has to themselves and to their craft. So the resting, the stretching, the you know, not not trying to burn candles on both ends, recognizing that even when you're with your friends, they have a different lifestyle than you do. So you 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 have to you have to recognize that part as well. So there's an obligation on the player, yes. Um, but then they, they, the organization has an obligation as well. Um, and, and, um, that one is harder, that one is harder to measure. Um, yes. you know, I, it, it, it can go, it can go a number of ways. One of the, one of the things is, is how much of that that you can control, like, you know, because they have, a, especially in a professional environment and, and, and trying, you know, the, your young pro in school, they'll, trying to break into this team and trying to figure out, you know, I can't afford to be hurt now because I want to make the team or I'm just on the cusp of, of there. So I just need to push a little more. Um, it's very hard as a parent to say, relax, because they know that they just have a little bit more and they don't want to go back. So you, you, it, it, that balance is a really, and it's a really difficult one. Um, is a really difficult one to have, and it so much of it depends. It depends on a on, on a lot. Um, you know, I've had I've had very good experiences with Christian and and and, and trainers, um, and I've had some that are that are um, shocking. 
Um, <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> and and unfortunately, it, it's been um. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, I'll have, I'll have to keep keep myself not anymore. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Well, listen up, man. I I do really appreciate you taking this time. And and uh, uh how many of these interviews have you done there, sir? I. <laughs> this might be my. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, this is gonna be your biggest one. one. We go, uh, but, one, one two. but 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 listen. Um. Yeah. I just wanna, like I said, I wanna thank you for coming on. I wanna let people know that we're gonna keep we're gonna keep bringing the uh, the the youth development stuff from different angles. I have agents lined up. I have you know people that are in charge of player development at professional clubs lined up. I have other parents lined up. I have college coaches lined up. I'm going to try to give people, you know, everything in this one may not fit everything that you may need to hear, Yeah. but hopefully you can take something out of it. And if you want to, like I said, help support us, I'm guessing we'll be on Patreon. But, but what I'm really going to do is I'm going to see, I got this coffee mug, but I'm going to get some. They got our logo on it <laughs> so people can have that, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but again, this was awesome and I appreciate you. Thank and, you. Uh, we'll talk soon. All right, buddy. Thanks, folks. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.